For more on what's going on in Venezuela, we turn to Fernando Coronil. He was born in Venezuela and is now a professor at the Graduate Center of the City University of New York. Welcome to World Focus. Thank you very much for inviting me. Give us some context. What is the anxiety um, behind these protests as they relate to uh, education in Venezuela? I think the fundamental anxiety concerns Chavez's effort to uh, create, to transform Venezuelan society towards a socialist state. And that means, in many people's minds, the concentration of power in the hands of the state and the reduction of freedoms. Freedom of expression, freedom to educate kids as one would want to. You mean freedom of expression in terms of the, the suspension of the radio stations and right. the, the threat against suspending or closing down others? That's right. You know, a while ago, 34 radio stations were suspended. But last Saturday, in response to, I mean, this, this Saturday, there was a, a threat to suspend 29 more radio stations. And so people are concerned about those limitations. And what do you make of the demonstrations? I mean, how widespread is opposition to President Chavez? Is it, is it limited to a certain section of uh, Venezuelan society, or is it pretty widespread? I think the country is deeply divided, it's deeply polarized. Chavez still has the majority of the population supporting him, but there is a growing sector that is concerned not only about the direction of the policies, and I think this is important to note, that it's not just the content of policies such as education policy, but also concern about what's happened to the economy and what's happened to living conditions that are, for many people, not improving as they would like to see them improve. So I think that the protests somehow integrate concern about specific policies with growing dissatisf dissatisfaction with the gap between, let's say, expectations and achievement. And let's turn uh, a little bit to talk about Iran. What do you, what do you make of Hugo Chavez's visit to Iran and, uh, and his promise to export gasoline to them uh, in defiance of international sanctions, of course, if it right. gets to that point? I think this is part of his long-standing policy to establish his alliances with countries in what he calls the Global South against metropolitan nations. Is it ideologically driven or is it driven by the desire to do business? I think it's both. I think it's ideologically driven in that he wants to establish a, 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 you know, an alliance of countries against the, the U.S. in particular. But it's also part of business. I think the only way Chavez depends on the U.S. and most of Venezuelan petroleum is sold to the U.S., the only way that Chavez can achieve, in his own understanding, more autonomy from the U.S. is by diversifying the Venezuelan economy and the connections between the Venezuelan economy and other nations. Venezuela has many links with, with Iran. Just last uh, week I was in Venezuela and I was seeing how in the interior of Venezuela there were tractors imported from Iran being used for agricultural purposes. And this deal with, with Venezuelan petroleum was part of this kind of long-standing effort by Chavez to diversify the source of international dependence. Okay, Fernando Coronel, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me.